for the Human Planet Urban Team, the Fez Tannery shoot proved to be the most revolting shoot ever. Central to the tanning process are wild pigeon droppings. The crew had to learn to cope with the overwhelming smells of the tannery and film their main character's life without falling into the caustic lime pits. Is this where he goes in at those steps? He goes in at those steps. On arrival in Morocco, cameraman Robin Cox wreckies the location, looking for good shots and angles for the sequence. We've been tanning leather here for hundreds of years, and um, it's supposed to be quite smelly, so let's just see what it's like. It's already right here, there's something pretty foul looking. My foot right in it. Wow, this is just amazing. Some sort of medieval factory. Not very 21st century at all. Robin sees where the fat and hair covered hides are first washed and painted with lime before being rinsed again. It bears no resemblance to what we think of as a sort of leather smell at the moment. It just smells like offal and rot. It's pretty um, gut wrenching actually. I guess you want to squint, let alone stop breathing. I'm trying to breathe in shallow breaths, but it's pretty, pretty strong. I'm not sure what it's gonna be like spending a week here. Their main character, Tammy, has worked here for years, and he has a few words of advice for Robin. <laughs> Robin finds some relief from the stink by climbing up to the tannery roof. It's a great place to get wide shots of the main courtyard. This is it, it's an amazing scene, it's just so colourful. It's just stunning, it's like paint pots of colour. The colour of these pits is just incredible, it's real blood red with all this sort of flesh around, it feels like it is blood. The shit pits are the, the sort of bluey brown ones across the back there, there's four pigeon shit pits, and then the bright greens over there, and the, those are the lime pits, sort of thing people used to use for getting rid of corpses, you know? Leave your um, mother-in-law in one of those for um, a couple of weeks and she's vanished, so it's um, pretty dangerous stuff. I think this has to be one of the most incredible sights I've ever seen. Um, it's almost biblical in a way. I mean, even just the mishmash of colours, and even though a lot of the guys are wearing fairly normal clothing, it just still feels completely out of this world. The next day, the crew start filming at the hide market. Like a whole herd flat pack. There's um, all sorts of different hides here. There's sheep and goats and cows and who knows what else. But um, they've all obviously travelled some distance. They're quite smelly. Although they've been to the tannery, they still find the hide market tough to cope with. It's pretty intense. And uh, I really don't think I'm ever going to eat meat ever again. They're here to film Tammy buying goat skins, which he'll take back to the tannery to process. Good. Okay. okay, got that. The crew find the heat, the flies and the hides too much and leave the market to get a wide shot. You go this way? Okay, I thought we might go for a little walk around the outside to see if there's another shot. That's where we get killed by a snake. We're going by the rubbish dump instead. These are the... Uh the many to the few that, uh, that made it through the skins market alive. Solidarity. 
It's almost a relief for the crew to return to the tannery to film the most important part of the sequence, the use of the pigeon poo. The first challenge is to balance a four metre jib on the pit walls. باش كتخلطها بالماء ما كيكونش فيها الريحه ولاني مع المده فاش كيطول كيطول في الماء مع المده عاد كيطلق الريحه The crew are now ready to film the most demanding sequence of the shoot. Okay, standing by. This is the most dangerous part of the process. What happens if somebody does fall into the line? Robin swaps his heavy camera for a lighter one, so he can follow Tammy across the caustic pits. Got this little arrangement, a small, small DV camera and a couple of gyros. There's a heavy weight inside that's spinning around incredibly fast and um, it's going to stop the camera swaying forwards and backwards and side to side hopefully. Not necessarily going to stop me swaying side to side. I am a bit worried about falling in. They're sort of buckets of water at the ready and a hose pipe to hose me down, but um, I think it would be goodbye to the camera if I go in. Following Robin, Patrick nervously steps onto the pit walls. You right? Whoops. <laughs> Undeterred, Robin goes for it. Well, stop, 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 stop. I lost, I lost my balance. Tammy's concerned yep. for Robin's safety as he crosses the increasingly slippery walls. Let's try not to get this too wet, hey? This is what's going to get me in. Action. Ah. And it doesn't want to turn corners. Oh, look what's happening. That's um, not good. You need to tighten that up. Patrick fixes the gyro. Robin finds his feet and starts to get the shots he needs. <laughs> Job done. Robin gets an honest review of the day. Did he think that one of us would probably fall in? Mm. <laughs> yeah, <of laughs> he did. Yeah. So we've done quite well. Traditional Fez tanneries are known for their use of natural dyes. Saffron is, weight for weight, more valuable than gold and has to be applied carefully by hand. Pomegranate is used for red dyes, indigo for blue, tree bark for brown, and wild mint for green. Once dyed, the hides are softened again, then sold on for handbags and shoes. By the end of the shoot, Patrick and Robin feel quite at home. I don't know about you, but I'm kind of going east right now. Yeah, yeah it's a couple of days in, it's not so bad. It's nothing, is it really? It's just like every day now. It's like passing by the bin in the kitchen. <laughs> I noticed the tourists coming here and looking down on the balcony have all got little bunches of um, mint held under their nose, lightweights. The team have a whole new respect for the Fez leather tanners and for the power of pigeon poo.